good to have you here with us on the Excuse Buster Show where we break through the roadblocks that get in your way of feeling how you want to feel and living the life that you want to live. I'm Lizzie Williamson and if time is something that is holding you back from doing what you want to get done, then stay tuned because this gorgeous woman next to me is here to help us get things done, but in a way that doesn't come at a cost to the important things like our families, our sanity, our health, and our happiness. She is the founder of the hugely successful Mums with Hustle, where she has a podcast and online courses. She also is a business coach, yes. a mum of two, an Instagram whiz, and has a smile that will light up the darkest of rooms. This is Tracy Harris. Thank you. That is an epic introduction. Speaking of smiles, <laughs> I just love you. I love your vibes all the time. Oh, the feeling is mutual. Thank you so much for having me over here. Thank you for inviting me to be on your show. I'm pumped to speak about this topic. Yeah, we're going to bust through some excuses here. Yeah, let's do it. Every morning when I start work, I have this song in that goes in my head. Yeah. Guess what it is? Do the hustle. Dun, 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 Oh yeah, I like that one. <laughs> yeah. So it's awesome. To be a hustler is great. You get stuff done. Yeah. But I find sometimes that I'm not kind of getting it right all the time when it comes to getting the things done I want to get done and doing it in a way that feels really good. Now from your own experience and from working with thousands of mums in business, where do you see that we can go wrong? Okay. With the hustle. Yeah. Okay. So first of all, hustle does not mean being frantic. Mm. It does not mean doing all of the things. Yeah. It does not mean putting yourself last. I think hustle means being, bringing a sense of consciousness to what you are doing. Because as mums and as ambitious women, we've just got a lot going on just by nature and the very stage of life that we are in. It is inevitable. So when I say mums with hustle, I just can't think of a better word for that stage in life. Mm. There is certainly some hustle that's going on, but you can be intentional and you can be very conscious um, to hustle in the right way. In a way, as you said in the intro, when we're not compromising love and relationships, and health and sanity. Mm. So I just need to put that one out there. Um, where I see women going wrong sometimes is it, it still comes from a very good place. So mm. even though, yeah, we might be using that language of, okay, they're going wrong, but it's it's still coming from a good place. Yes, I was trying to think of a better word than the going wrong thing I, on my trip here, but it didn't kind of come to me, so yeah. It, it, it's okay, it's okay. Mm. Like we're having a very frank and honest conversation with mm. everyone. Um, but at the same time, you know, we do need to acknowledge our, we need to bring a sense of self-awareness to this topic when we're speaking about time, because a lot of us are super ambitious and we just have this heart that wants to serve and make a difference and just almost be people pleasing to everyone that's around oh, us. Oh yeah. You know, we want to be the best, um, person in our marriage we want to be a great wife or we want to be a great lover or partner or best friend or daughter and we want to be um, great employees or we want to be successful and savvy business women we want to be great mothers mm -hmm. and so we start telling ourselves that all time you know well-known phrase i don't have time or i don't have enough time and we know that when we start saying something to ourselves over and over again it's what we are programmed to focus on. It's all that we see and it actually amplifies and it expands. So true. Yeah. The more you say something, the more that keeps happening in your life. Mm -hmm. So if you keep saying, I don't have time to exercise or I don't have time to read books and learn or I don't have time to cook healthy meals or I don't have time to work on my business, mm -hmm. all that you're going to see is more obstacles and you're gonna just keep seeing a lack of time in your day. So I think the first thing that we need to do is just stop saying that. Yeah. 
and we need to almost rephrase the question what am i choosing to do with my time because it is a choice mm. yeah and i don't want anyone to feel like we're lecturing them and being like you can do it it's a choice but ultimately it truly truly is and when we have this ambition and this heart to serve sometimes that can cloud that and we can get stuck thinking you need to do everything and you need to do it yesterday but what I do is I like to show women that it's about getting really clear and intentional on what you want and it's about knowing intuitively what is the next best step to make that thing happen let's get from A to B not from A to Z it's okay like let's just get from yeah. A to B and it's success is in those small cumulative steps like the two minute moves mm -hmm. you know like we start these habits and that's where success is it's, it's always compounding no one gets rich off a single dollar coin but if you keep adding a dollar a dollar a dollar a dollar it happens so um yeah everything success in life happiness it's all it's all in the small little things done with great great love and intentionality behind it yeah you don't need to do all of the things just focus slow down and yeah be intentional so you're choosing where you put your time. I love that reframe. Yeah. So what does that look like? You're sitting there, you're, you're, you're going for it in your day and it's just, I don't know, you're just feeling stressed out, heading towards burnout. Does that take stopping and going, okay, right now, what do I need to do? Like what, what is with the dialogue be that you use in your own head? Oh my gosh, good question. Because I do actually have anxiety. Mm -hmm. So I love putting that out there. Like I'm not this person that is like free of all of these mindset, you know, hang ups. Like I am in it like every single day. Um, just yesterday I found myself saying that phrase, I don't have time, I don't have time. Like there was a lot going on with work the, both of the boys were around. Um, yeah, there was just lots of things coming up and I found myself saying that. I was like, oh, I really need to wash my hair because Lizzie's coming over tomorrow. Yes, you, I hope no, you did. I did, I did. <laughs> I washed my hair and then I was like, I did it. <laughs> Fabulous anyway. And so I was telling myself this narrative on repeat and then I was like, no, no, no. This is anxiety. I am worrying about the future. I am going to be okay. It's about this trust of self. I am going to be okay. The boys are okay. Like everything is okay. Let's just bring myself down to here and now. What am I doing? Let's find joy in this present moment. I'm cooking, I'm here at home. My boys are here with me. Like it, it's about bringing yourself back down to gratitude and finding that joy in the present moment of what you're doing now rather than living like 10 steps ahead, what you could be doing, what you should be doing, what's going to get you there faster. Like, let's rein ourselves back in mm. and be like present here and grateful now. Yeah, which sounds amazing. Not easy to do. No. And you might be listening or watching this saying, yes, yes, I've got to do that. But in the moment sometimes that can we forget to do mm -hmm. stuff like that. So is this been something that you have practiced to be able to be there yesterday feeling anxious and you can come back to oh that? Oh my goodness. Practice, prayer, meditation, kinesiology, lots of self-development <laughs> books, yeah. lots of just going through struggle, personal struggle, mm -hmm. loss. Like it is just a journey. It's not something that you arrive at overnight, but I think we can all bring a sense of consciousness to whatever we're doing. So, okay. This is coming or, or know your triggers yeah. and just be like, okay, I know that when I have a lot on my plate, I tend to freak out. And so let's look ahead and try to put some things in place. That's going to be there like tools for me or things to support. Sometimes like yesterday, I literally just stopped in the middle of everything. I was like, I'm, I'm going to go have that shower right now. Mm -hmm. Cause I just did a little self assessment. And I was like, okay, there is actually great worth in me going to just step out of this situation and go and have a shower and fix the hair because that's like such a small thing, but it's gonna like give me like a hundred poker chips in terms of like how I'm gonna feel about myself and it's just a big tick because that was something I really needed to do. So that's what I mean. It's what is the next best thing for you in this situation? that's then gonna give you the confidence and just the healthy perspective to evaluate like what is actually going on here. Mm. Yeah. So when it comes with everything that we wanna get done in our work for that day, that week, choosing that, that thing that to do next, 
do you have some you know a process or some some advice yeah. for us to kind of think you know because something you can look at this massive list of what you need to do how do we know what to do next what well, to choose I'm just gonna put it out there you're never gonna be up to date okay yeah there's always when you have your own business um, there's always something else you could be doing. You could be send, working on your email marketing. You could be writing a blog post. You could be going to interview someone and doing a Facebook Live. You know, there's a million things you could do, but it, they're not all of equal importance and you don't all have to do them at the same time. Mm. So for me, I just go into every day with three tasks and I try to categorize them for myself. I'm big on relationships and I believe that success and happiness in life and in business is really, relationships is a huge part of it. Mm -hmm. So I always have like just one task that is about moving a relationship forward. Maybe it is a relationship with an existing client that I'm working with. I might send them a message just to say, hello, I have seen that you were doing some absolutely kick-ass stuff with your Instagram stories and you have been implementing X, Y, and Z from our sessions together. I want you to know I see you and you're doing a phenomenal job. And it's something simple like that. Um, or it might be reaching out to collaborate with someone or just being like, oh, hello, how would you like to have a guest blogging opportunity for me on my platform and, and vice versa. Um, so something that's good, something relationship focused that can move you forward. Just one thing mm. in the day. Then something to do with marketing your business. Because you, I mean, it doesn't matter how great your business is or how amazing your product is. If you're not marketing it well, no one knows it exists. So what is one thing marketing related that you can do in that day? And it might be, okay, I'm going to set a timer. It's going to be one hour. I'm not gonna pick up my phone or, or multitask or yeah. anything. That is like the worst thing you could ever do is multitask, by the way. Mm -hmm. Single attention. Um, Except for when you're leaving a smoothie and doing heel raises, that's okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> that's, that's exercise, you gotta get it done. Um, you know, so I'm like, no, no, no. Let's, when you're focusing and you wanna get a task done, mm. if it's marketing, you might be like, okay, today I'm gonna write four in this one hour, because I know I can fit in four. Um, social media captions and I'm going to bust those out and I'm going to write those mm. and that's it. Love the tip about the timer. Yeah, set the mm. timer otherwise mm. like if you don't give yourself a boundary you're just going to be like well probably procrastinating is a big one that shows up especially if it is a task that is really important either um, to your household or to your health like working out or if it's a task like I don't know to help build your business if it's boring or hard we procrastinate but really that is the thing that's going to move you forward that's a really good sign it's like oh well, what thing should i do that's going to drive mm -hmm. me forward it's probably the thing that you don't want to do it's probably the facebook live that you don't want to do mm -hmm. it's probably you know building the learning how to set up email marketing and it's like mm -hmm, it's it's boring and i don't know how and blah 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 and you find all these excuses um, you're procrastinating, that's a really good sign that you actually do need to do that thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, what was I saying? I was you saying You have to do things. So you've got the relationships, marketing. Marketing. And then something to do with business growth. Like, mm. maybe it is um, doing a course, or maybe it is writing a new email sequence, or maybe it is working on your ebook, or setting the timer and, and writing writing your book you know or planning an event something that is gonna or, or a coaching call something that brings in the money basically mm. an income generating task specifically so it's only those three things mm. yeah and if you can do that every day that would be huge yeah yeah mm. you know and, yeah, some of those tasks important. aren't long mm. to send someone a dm or an email and say you're doing a phenomenal job or how about you and i exchange blog posts to bust out that email five minutes ten minutes mm. it, it, it requires more bravery than time yeah yeah mm. and then you know the marketing writing your social media captions maybe that one takes you the full hour just keep creating them for the full hour maybe you'll end up with ten maybe yeah. you'll end up with two because maybe it's just not your wheelhouse and you're still finding your voice mm. online so writing a caption is a big ask of you yeah so that's why i say put on a timer mm. put on one hour and just be like that's all i'm spending this. Yeah. And then the third thing, something income generating. Yeah. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. 
When you look at how we can get things done in our business, in our work, I think when you're an ambitious woman, yeah. you you will do whatever it takes to get your work done. You know, you work, work, work. And yet, so many women that I see exercise, self-care, putting yourself first, all those things, does end up going down to the bottom of your list of priorities. Yeah. So I'm wondering with your amazing business coaching brain, what you can see that we do that helps us in our in our business, in our work, it's stuff done that we can apply to that other part, that, that self-care, that exercise, and that that helps. Yeah. Okay, so we are creatures of habit. So mm. habit and ritual, like mm. if um, exercise isn't just like part of your everyday, then you might need to bring a bit of habit and ritual to how you get that done. And you might need to schedule the time in like you would a business meeting, you would write it in your diary, put it in your iCal, well, it can be the same with your um, your self-care or your personal time. So I love to look at a calendar and just be like, okay, what date and time this month are we going on a date, like to my mm -hmm. husband and I, because we yeah. have identified that. We used to say, I don't have time, I don't have time, or we don't have anyone to look after our kids. That was another excuse we used to say. Um, now we're just like, no, 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 this is a priority, so this is happening. So we literally plan in the personal time, we plan in the self-care, and we let each other know about it so that it's like, this is a thing and this is happening. Mm. Um, and then, yeah, I think if it's planned in, it's not left to be an afterthought. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And it's the same as, you know, little things, like making yourself little smoothie bags so that all you have to do is tip the ingredients into the blender, pour in whatever your liquid is, and press go. Love it. You know, that's mm. like a tiny little thing. Mm. Um, having your workout gear already there in the morning, like I knew on Tuesday, on Monday night when I went to bed, I was like, I really miss, I feel like I need to run. I mm. need to run, so I got my stuff ready. Um, really, it, that took me probably 30 seconds. I was mm. like, okay, there's the top, there's the pants, here's the shoes and socks. That's all it was. Mm. I didn't even have a playlist. I had none of that. My iPhone, my watch was like not synced to my new phone. and I, That could have been a barrier for me. Like, mm. oh, I don't have music. And then like you sit there fluffing around trying to get your music. No. I was like, I've got 10 minutes, I'm gonna sprint. This is gonna be a sprint day, 10 minutes. Mm. And I just put the stuff on, took the boys to daycare. And when I came back, it was 10 to nine. I did my 10 minute sprint sessions, came back knackered. And like 9 a.m. I was like done and feeling on top of the world. Mm. So rituals, but also um, do the hardest thing first. Mm. Cause then you get a high, like you feel so like, Woohoo! Yeah, yeah I'm yeah. so awesome. Tick, tick, <laughs> tick. Yeah, you know, and you can ride that high into the rest of your day. Yeah. So do that thing that you're procrastinating on because it's a sign that it's something good for you or your business. Mm. And try to do it first in the day or sooner in the day. But yeah, schedule things in. Great. That's another one. Great. Now, another great thing you talk about is this conscious. Hustling. Yeah. Great word. Can we like dig a bit deeper into what that actually is? Yes. I feel like a lot of the time I'm hustling. I mean, I've got my eye on the prize, but I am not really conscious in it. And I'm wondering what I need to do to be that. Yeah. Mm. Well, I mean, again, I don't have it right all the time. Oh. I catch myself. I'm like, no, no, no. What are you doing? What are you doing? Mm. So being a conscious hustler is like, okay, yeah, you've got work to do. What, what is the most important thing? And it's about slowing down mm -hmm. so that you can actually have a bigger impact or it's about going slow so that you can go far. So even um, I use my, my conscious hustling example is often when you wanna collaborate with someone like another business owner or a blogger or an influencer. I am all about the relationships as I said. So I would rather spend time getting to know someone, and that might take more time, mm. um, before I say, hey, would you like to work together? Um, because I just think I'd rather ha move forward and grow together and cheer each other on, rather than just a transactional type of collaboration where it could be like, 
I've just launched my course and she's got a podcast so I'm gonna go on there and I'm gonna like you know promote myself basically mm. and then I'm done and we'll never talk again yeah um, I, I'm much for the first scenario you know some people are like oh that's a slow burn but it's like yeah it can be but I'm bringing a sense of consciousness I'm aware that we have a lot to offer each other I follow the practice of um, I guess maybe I'm more of a soul printer. Mm. I follow the idea that we can just go further if we slow down. So yeah, we're hustling, we're working, but it's not about this frantic chaos, you know, be on Twitter, be on here, be on there. It's like, no, no, no. And you don't need to do like three posts on Instagram every single day. It's like, you are better to have three or four Instagram posts in a week for your business that comes with intention and consciousness and purpose and value for your audience rather than the obligatory Instagram posts every single day or you know twice a day for the sake of putting out content. Mm. Yeah. So I feel like it's to all get energy. to this, I feel like to get to this, we gotta peel back a bit more, ladies and gentlemen. So our our values, purpose, our why, I guess that's something that yeah. it's gotta be really important if to know was actually an important thing that we want to get done that day. Yes, 100%. Because there's, we, we all walk around saying, oh, I wish I could, you know, increase muscle mass, or I wish I could lose this amount of weight, or I wish I could get that car or get that job or whatever it is, um, or I wish I could write a book, for instance. But it's like, well, do you actually, truly, at the core of who you are, really desire that? Because mm. if you want that, you there is no obstacle. Like, you can achieve that thing, but it's like, are you prepared to take the action necessary to make that happen? That's more of the question. Yeah. Are you prepared are you, to take the action? Yeah, because it might mean usually you have to let go in order to grow. So you might have to let go of some it could be personal time it could be relationships it could be decluttering your physical space maybe you're not in a place to do that it could be um, letting go of limiting beliefs that you might have internally there's always letting go in order to get to the next stage mm -hmm. and it's just like well you say you want this thing you say you want to take your family on a holiday to Disneyland and it is possible for you but it, it might come at a, at a cost Mm. Um, are you prepared to actually make this like truly happen because then you can make it happen you can you can achieve anything and no one is ever truly stuck yeah it just all it is about peeling back the layers mm. what do you have to let go of so you can move forward and grow yeah. and knowing what you want yeah it's mm. like if you actually ask someone or if someone asks you what do you actually want like if a fairy godmother came today and mm -hmm. could wave the wand what do you want? Truly, you only get one wish and you, yeah, that's it. You can't take it back. There's no refunds, exchanges. Like, what would you actually say? Sometimes that's very confronting because you're like, oh, I'll, I'll get this. Actually, no, that's not actually really what I want. You know, mm -hmm. can I change it? Yeah. So know what you want and just believe that you can have that thing, but you have to be willing to take the necessary action and also let go of some other things, obstacles or thoughts or whatever, um, yeah, that are gonna come up and, and try to stop you or bamboozle you, mm. yeah. So when you're talking this way to a coaching client or to your mums in business, do you get them to write this stuff down? Like, what's the process? Well, I had a coaching session this morning, mm. so that's perfect. Sometimes just verbalizing it mm. and then saying it back to them and then they might verbalize it again and just go, oh, I, and then I literally said this morning, I was like, okay, so what does that sound like to you now hearing that back? You can mm. write it down. Current volume is 20%. Oh, oh! <laughs> this is a very technological house. Sorry, that was, <laughs> that was Siri, my home pod speaking. <laughs> um, yeah, sometimes it's a great exercise to write it down and read it back and you can just be like, oh, that is just so not even true and so not what is happening here. Um, or you can verbalize it or record it and listen to it and it can sound like absolute rubbish. Mm -hmm. So I, had, I said to my client this morning, you know, 
what does that sound like to you in all honesty and she said oh my gosh it actually just sounds like straight up fear mm. and I was like yes so then we we went into this other conversation about ego versus intuition and, and those voices in our heads and mm -hmm. how to know which yeah what is the voice what comes from our voice of ego and what comes from our voice of intuition and that's like a whole other show oh yeah <laughs> isn't it crazy though that's, that's crazy and just we, you know we go for it we're busy 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 we're so busy it's like busy is the badge of honor and oh. who asks you oh how are you you're busy oh i'm busy yeah, yeah i'm good i'm busy and yeah. then off you go with your shoes making a sound and you're carrying a coffee yes but what <laughs> is this if we don't know what we're being busy about then yes it is just busyness for yeah. busyness Say and you it's can't so, handle it, that. Yeah, it's so great to stop and say to yourself, what is it that I actually want? It's a big question. Yeah, and I just feel like yeah, like we've all worked around or with those really busy people, those people that glorify busy. And I was never like that. Like I was very like, if I am done today, like if everything is done here and it's feeling good, like I am going to go home. Mm -hmm. And I think that sets a really good example to some people that you don't just need to be like burning the midnight oil all the time. Like it's okay to be like, yeah, I did an amazing job and I'm going. Like that is enough for today. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, putting up your own boundaries. But while we're on the conversation, I guess of time, um, in life and in business, I heard Michael Hyatt. I don't know if you follow him. I love yeah, him yeah, so yeah. much. Yeah. He's like this dad figure to me. Oh. Um, he's an entrepreneur. He's amazing. Go look him up. You probably, I hope you know him. But he has this three-step thing: automate, eliminate, delegate. When mm -hmm. it comes to productivity and time management, how you can create more space and time freedom in your life and in your business. So, automate delegate and eliminate and it is like it, it you can apply it as a busy mum um in a personal life type of setting and you can apply it to business there's always things that you can streamline processes or put more structure or create habits around yes um, or procedures especially as i was saying with the you know create the pre-packed smoothie thing so you can just chuck it in the blender with mm. the liquid that's that's a way of kind of automating something or you could have groceries delivered to home or you could um, chop up your veggies in the morning the veggies all yeah, in yeah. one go mm. for the entire week or mm. batch cook or menu plan or have you know little pictures on the fridge for the kids to know that how to get themselves ready like a procedure for them in the morning you wake up you have to get dressed you have to brush your teeth you have to put your shoes on they I did that because I was so so over the nagging right the duh, duh. and then so we wrote a list together and i put it on the fridge and then instead of saying anything i just sort of go point <laughs> the list you know where to go the list yeah i'm not saying anything the list yeah. exactly <laughs> so it sets my bedtime routines a lot of people have that stuff going mm. But um, this eliminate, eliminate. really resonates with me i really? soon you said eliminate what do you want to eliminate yeah. Uh, I reckon there's just a whole lot of stuff we're doing in the busy yeah. that we could be eliminating. Yeah, like it doesn't fill you up mm. or it's just something that you've outgrown mm. or it's just something that you picked up somewhere along the line. Someone said that you should do that so you're doing it but it really isn't serving you or growing your business. Yeah. There's a lot that you can just eliminate. Mm. So, and, and it is about decluttering, decluttering your mind, decluttering your workflow. Um, even decluttering your home, like always, like just yeah. You know, I've got, I've got um, decluttering Diva. I'm doing an episode oh, with her. Yes. So interested. She's going to show us how to do that. I guess I wonder if this busyness thing that we've got is connected to not actually knowing what we want. So we're filling up our our days with stuff. We say we don't have time for anything, but really if we knew what we wanted more, if we knew- Yeah, the conscious purpose, hustling. And that's the conscious hustling. The conscious- Ball! <laughs> yes, mm. yeah. And sometimes we do know what we want, but we just don't feel worthy of even getting it. So we just like spin our wheels and cause a lot of dust to go in the air or we're just like frantic and stressed and yeah. I had the most beautiful friend, I don't know if she's watching this, but she said to me, because uh, we went on a holiday to Thailand a, a few weeks ago 
and I shared some pictures on social media and she said, oh, this place looks perfect, Trace, like I really wanna go and I wrote, so go. And she's like, oh, I will when I lose weight. And I was like, but you already, no, go and create those memories with your beautiful babies now. Like you want the holiday now, live it, live it to the full. Like don't put limitations on yourself or little checkpoints for worthiness. Um, I think that's, yeah, that's a big thing. People say, I don't have time. And it's like, um, well, you, there's something holding you back. When you say that, there is a person, a situation, an environment, thoughts, there is something holding you back. Mm. Yeah. And then on the flip side, I suppose, of that is when you want it, that you want it all now. You know what you want, give it to me now. I'm so ambitious, I just want this, you just go. Yeah. And that doesn't seem to work either. I know, that doesn't really work. It's and kind of me as well. Yeah, same. Mm. I want everything done yesterday. Yeah, Cause, yeah. Because like by the time I've vocalized one really awesome idea, I have about ten others. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> it's like yeah, a classic yeah entrepreneur or ambitious woman way of thinking. So yeah, that is that's a real challenge. And then so we're in that, and then when we're we're with our kids, and we're not really kind of there with them, or we're exhausted, or we haven't gone and you know done something for ourselves, we haven't done any exercise because we are so ambitious and yeah. and we want to just make this massive, amazing impact. impact on the world. Yeah. That doesn't seem to be working a lot of the time for a lot of us. No, because that's again getting away from the present. Like just mm. be like, okay, rein yourself back in, be here, be now, be here now. And it comes back to expectations. Like sometimes people are like, oh, uh, because you might be a people pleaser, so you might be doing things for the sake of other people. But in the end, I don't think that those people actually really care. We go into a lot of like mind reading or assuming mm. what is expected of us or assuming that when hubby walks in the door he wants to see the house looking a particular way but he's never actually ever said that and he's like totally cool if it's not or you know we can put pressures on ourselves based on what our expectations are of being a stay-at-home mum might be or being a working mother might be we have these images of what that looks like and then yeah it, it's just it's all internal it's mm. like no no no. for me it doesn't fit or it doesn't bring joy or it's like not productive mm. yeah so what's your strategy for I guess being really productive in terms of say you've got this this vision of, of where you're wanting to go do you do a bit of reverse engineering like what is it that you do uh, definitely if I'm like at the moment we're building something mm. for, income generating for our business to help us grow to help us serve more people and that had backward design to it i had to start with the end goal and then break it down into chunks and kind of be like okay what is everything that we're going to need to create or who's the who are we going to have to hire if we were to create a team can we afford to do that? Is what? this a conversation? Is this out on paper? Like oh, this mean? is, it's, it's everything. Uh -huh. It is like, I have to do it in all ways. There's a lot of writing it down, drawing, visual. Mm -hmm. um, we've got a really massive whiteboard in one of our um, rooms, which is kind of like where I record my podcasts. And yeah, we do a lot of drawing on there, a lot of pen and paper, but a lot of conversation. So I actually, um, work with my husband he's joined me in the business this year so we have a lot of chats um, to kind of get it out but yeah starting backwards knowing what you want but then yeah going backwards from there mm. it's also this is gonna sound so counterintuitive to what I just said but it is also entirely possible and also quite often even better to start with just your passion and purpose and, and that's enough and just take mm. take small steps mm. and kind of let your intuition guide you, let your audience, your online audience guide you. Yeah, and, and then like you don't have to know everything in order to start. That sounds really nice. Yeah. Mm. I think we can get definitely get stuck in the need to know it all, need to know it all. beforehand yeah. Yeah. trap. There's different things. I think if it's a project, if it's 
um, something that you're starting or building, it's okay to start at the end and go backwards. Like if you're trying to think of, um, I don't know, an online product that you're gonna release, and then you know that you want to run some Facebook ads and then you know that you need to really get email subscribers. So in that sense, it's nice to plan backwards. But with the other example of just starting with passion and purpose and knowing your audience, um, it's nice to just start there. That's really all that you need. And the rest is gonna, it will reveal itself. Through relationships, again, people will tell you what they're responding to what they want from you, how you can serve them. And it's just about being open and receptive to that and not being like, this is what I want, this is what I want, and failing to hear what the people want. Mm. Yeah. And then you're coming from that place of purpose, passion, and then the other piece of the pie, I suppose, in that is generating some income. Yes. And the money and knowing that, um, yeah, and seeing how that all works with it as well. Yeah, because sometimes you do have to do things that, um, oh, I don't know, you'll introduce income streams that maybe aren't your like primary passion, but mm. it's a building block to get you to the next thing. Yeah. But whatever you do, you're still doing it with a heart full of love and service because you're guided by the bigger purpose, the why, and the people that you want to help. Mm. Yeah. When you look at why are you doing what you're doing? Why are you scheduling your exercise, put out your active wear, make that happen? What is that ultimately about for you? Ultimately, it is, it's really about my health and my happiness. Like mm. if you don't have those two things in life, like, oh my goodness. I, I just think every time I get, even if it's a, like a flu or a cough or a cold, you're really just lying there and you're a bit miserable. And then like when that cold lifts, I'm just, I don't know about you, but I'm desperate to get outside. It's like I'm this caged animal. Yeah. And it's like, oh, just give me the fresh air. Like, let me out. And then it's in those moments you're really like, wow, I cannot take my health for granted. That was just a cold. And I, yeah, I feel like my sense of joy is just like gone from me. And it's like, give, yeah, my health. I can be productive. I can be healthy. I can be happy. I can serve other people. I can be there for my children if I am healthy and happy. And I think it's about approaching exercise from a place of just wellness, not just like physical. Yeah. I'm with you on that one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've gone through a journey, you know. I started out doing it just because of, of physical results that exercise could give you. Yeah. And then it went to, um, this is going back to probably like when I was about 18 years old. Mm -hmm. And then it went to, oh wow, like I'm lifting stronger. Like it went to strength kind of goals. Yeah. Um, or even speed in terms of like my running and things like that. I was like getting personal bests all the time. And that became the driver. And then it became competition. Like I wanted to place in the fun runs that I was participating in. It wasn't fun, it was competitive, <laughs> <laughs> you know? And then I kind of made that happen. And then I was like, oh no, this is actually for the inner health benefits. It's not about the outside. It's not about the competition. It's like, I'm having a really good cardiovascular health and I'm watching um, my recovery time just decrease. And that was amazing. And I saw the ripple effects into the quality of sleep that I was having. And that was good. And then it just became more about headspace all of a sudden. Mm. It was like, no, no, no. This is like a holistic thing. Those things are just like, I don't know, the gateway drug to running an exercise, like the thing that they sell you, like look good, da da da. But it became about just, yeah, I was, my, my sharpness, like productivity was impacted, happiness, joy, health, like everything holistically. Mm. What living a healthy life and lifestyle through exercise, nutrition, low tox lifestyle, what you're cleaning your home with, everything, the thoughts that mm. come into your mind, everything. It's like, no, 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 it's so much bigger than that. Mm. But it only took me, I'm a slow learner maybe, it only took me like, what? I don't want to reveal my age, but maybe like 15 years to yeah. figure that out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all those little things, those little yeah. daily practices and everything that you've been learning. So before we get into the final question from you, yeah. like your top, like just summing up your top tips for this whole time thing, right? Yeah. I wanted to let everyone know where you want them to find you. Oh, and connect okay. with you. Yes. 
all right well i am everywhere online well not really everywhere i okay. mainly hang out on instagram and well, you've got like something like 1400 and something no. posts do i you do yeah okay that. yeah i was looking because i'm getting close to a thousand and uh, times i posted and i went what the that's hell a lot of content that's a lot, of, a lot of time yes yeah a lot of value oh thank, thank you, you. I'm actually proud of that now. Okay, that's cool. Um, yeah, so Instagram at Mums with Hustle, Facebook page at Mums with Hustle. They're, I use them quite differently. Um, yeah, so it's worth a follow on each one of those. And then there's a private Facebook group. If you are a mum looking to start, or maybe you have started and you're growing a business, um, jump on over to the Facebook group. It's just. I'll pop the link up. Yeah. The yeah. Is it on your website? The link? Uh, probably somewhere. Yeah, so anyway, I've got the link of your website up yeah. there, but I'll pop the, the link there okay. to that one. Yes, and mm. then of course, there's just so much content in the way of blog posts, free resources like downloadable PDFs, eBooks, all of that stuff, free mini courses, um, the podcast, it's over at mumswithhustle.com. And really, we're speaking about time, so I have to mention, if you do get addicted to the podcast, which is highly likely, Oh yeah, I am. You're on it. <laughs> She's on it. That was, you know, I think that was like my first Such, podcast I ever did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, it was one of my first that I ever recorded. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's easier to access that on iTunes or Stitcher because you can subscribe and then you can listen to that wherever you are. A lot of people are, that they say they don't have time for learning or they don't have time for self-development. That's, that's why I've chose the mode of podcasting. Yeah. Um, because you can just listen to it in the car. You can listen to it on the train, on your commute. Take me to the gym. There's lots of people doing that. People listening with headphones in while they're breastfeeding babies at night in the dark. Yeah. All sorts of things. So, mm. yeah. iTunes and Stitcher for the Android friends. Awesome. Yeah. Head on over to all of those places. And also, really would love to hear from you in the comments about... Time. When you say to yourself, I don't have the time, what is it that you've learnt so far oh, from yeah. this episode that you can say to yourself now? What are you going to put into action? Leave a little comment there and we can keep you accountable with that. Yeah. There's nothing like actually putting it out there, what you're going to do. Then like and share this episode as well. If you would like this one and all future episodes into your inbox so you don't miss one, then head over to twominutemoves.com forward slash live TV. Pop in your details there and and um, yeah, we would love to send those out to you. Top tips. Let's sum Ooh. this all up. And I'm talking, if someone says to you, I just do not have the time to okay. do this and this and this. And the idea of having these something that's actionable, that's doable, yeah. um, that you can either say to yourself or do. What, what is would it? I say? What would you say? I don't have the time. I really don't have the time. Lizzie, what do you want? What do I want? What do you truly want and okay. truly desire? Okay. And how how important is that in terms of like its happiness scale and joy and pleasure for you as a person? Like why is this so important? Like do you actually want that thing? So you've got to assess that and then you've got to own it and be like, yes, I do want it. Mm -hmm. And then I want you to ask yourself, okay, well, what is blocking me from doing this thing is it really time or is it something that i need to let go of in order to make room for this thing in my life and then it becomes the breaking it down into just you know even if it's one simple action a day towards achieving that thing it's still progress and it's that cumulative effect so what is one small thing it could be a two minute move what is one small thing that gets you closer to achieving that goal? Just be patient, mm. is what I would say to her. Okay, patience. 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 So hard for <laughs> so the hard. Hard. <laughs> <laughs> But we will get there. Yes, All we can yeah. do is just keep trying, yeah. and that is such wonderful advice. Live in the present more, you know? Just like be grounded, be, it starts with gratitude. Be grateful for what you're experiencing now and what surrounds you now because you're often just focusing on this thing that you want and it's in the future and it's like, okay. Okay, that is our challenge for you to 
Think about what it is that you want and we would love to hear from you what you have come up with. I'm actually going to do it and I'm going to share it in the <gasps> comments. Yes. I feel like I need a night to do it or something, but I'll see. I've got a bit of a drive home. Because so I'll see if I can come up with it on my drive home. It's a big question. And I'll question. pop it in the comments. Didn't I tell you that this woman <laughs> knows her stuff and was going to help us bust through that Thank no you. time thing? Yeah, it's no, no, no. crazy that we say to ourselves we have no time to do all these things that are so important to our health and our happiness. So yeah. thank you, Tracy Harris. Oh, so it's been very, good. very it's been much. And thank you for joining us and for you to take the time to actually give back to yourself by listening or watching something like this. This is really going to help you break through what's getting in your way so that you can really do what you want to do and live the way you want to live. So thank you thank so you. much. You're here with your beautiful smoothie. Yeah, I've got my smoothie. Your beautiful smile. It's you funny. are amazing. <laughs> so you. lucky to know you and to have you to share this with the Two Minute Move Excuse Buster audience. So thank you. Thank you. Bye, we'll go guys. Now.